Hello everybody. I show you what I have under the tarp. Uh, haven't started in a little bit uh, with all this uh, coronavirus thing, all that stuff, and then having to stay at home. Uh, I've been working on other projects, but uh, kind of neglected my favorite one here. It's a uh, 1983 Ford Mustang GT with a 5 liter V8. I've had it uh, probably over 20 years now. Uh, I know I had it since I was about 23. It was uh, I bought it at my first base uh, when I was in California, and it was actually in uh, Tascadero, California, and uh, had one repaint when I when I bought it. Had a you know pretty much original besides that, uh, but you know, uh, and the amount of time I had it, all the deployments that I've been on, and being in different countries, I had to let it sit for a long time. You know. Went through a divorce even and uh, let it sit. I almost lived in it at one time or or, or one time or another. <laughs> if it wasn't for my friends, you know, uh, taking me in, I, I would have been living in it. But uh, it's been my best friend in a, in a sense. And uh, unfortunately, I just had to let it sit. Uh, other projects and you know sometimes you just get tired of working on something just need a break from it so 83 uh, and this year was uh, they were trying to bring the horsepower back and uh, if you want to call 175 horsepower a lot I guess from the year before it was at 150 I believe so what they did to achieve that they put a four barrel carburetor on it uh, versus the two barrel that was on the 82 GT and I think it was 157 horsepower for the 82 GT so a little jump you know going from a two barrel to a four barrel and uh, this motor craft uh, it looked like a holly I guess it was but he couldn't adjust it or do anything with it. So when I got it, uh, after leaving my first base, I, I came to uh, Shreveport, Louisiana at Barksdale Air Force Base. Uh, it's pretty much where, you know, things went well for a while. Uh, I just rebuilt the engine and it was my first engine I ever did. I, I made the mistake of putting a high volume oil pump with just a standard oil pan. I ended up frying the lower end. By the time I got from San Antonio to Shreveport, it was knocking pretty bad. Uh, you know, had back then had a simple cam, small upgrade, so did a little bit of head work to the stock heads, uh, my own port and polish, put an e-cam in it, a nice intake, a Holly 650 double pumper at the time, which seemed like a lot of carb for it, and it probably was, you know, but it ran good. It ran real good for what it was. It was a good light-to-light -light car, you know, not a top-end car, but uh, this one was originally a four-speed car. Uh... It was actually a three-speed overdrive, you know, four-speed. It was a non-AC car from California. Uh, Roll-up windows, nothing fancy. You know, it's got power brakes, uh, power steering. Um, I converted it years ago to a 8.8. Uh, .8. It was originally 7.5 rear end. I put 373 gears that I did myself. I never in my life ever thought I would be able to do it. And I guess being young, I, I had a lot of courage, so I tried it, and I actually... It's been on there ever since, and it's been well over 10 years since I've had done the gears myself, and uh, no whining or anything, but that rear end is probably about a go anyways. It's been through some, some hard years, a lot of abuse and a lot of burnouts, and even took it down the track a few times, but mostly street stuff. Now it's probably slow as anything, slow as molasses, you know, now compared to everything that's out there, uh, but it's still a fun little cruiser. It's a T-top car. Uh, it's one of my favorite things, but like all T-tops, they leak a little bit, you know, they always have that issue. No matter what T-top car it is, Ford, Chevy, whatever, it's, it's going to leak, you know. It's going to have a little leak. I'm going to unlock it here. Been through many changes interior-wise. Change the steering wheel, steering column. Went from a non-tilt to a tilt. Uh, recently redid the carpet. 
uh, put different bucket seats like the original style but uh, they don't have the line that the, the original ones did but you know I got these on a trade and back's a mess but it's got some carpet I need for the cargo area still need to do the top finish that up but uh, dash is actually not a Mustang dash it's a Fairmont dashboard uh, dash pad I'll just say that but I do have an, a nice uh, Ford Mustang dash pad for it and I dyed that black panels are reproduction but not for this year it's for 85 I think up but you know even little door handles I've replaced door uh, window crank uh, all new NOS stuff. I even have the brake pedal pads NOS. I just need to install them uh, Did a little upgrade with the Hurst Shifter, you know little just little upgrades nothing nothing major Nothing major at all I did have wider wheels actually they were the same width they just the offset was 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 horrible made their back wheels stick out real bad and actually the quarter uh, panel lip would cut into the tire so I had to buy some different weld wheels and these are old man they're old school they're not you know cool like like the wheels of today but it's a four leg still it kind of limits my my choice of wheels options you know wheel options I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery The engine is actually off an 85 Mustang that I owned for a short time that I got from a friend of mine. He did a lot of SCCA racing, so he put aluminum heads, uh, GT40X heads. I've got uh, equal length headers from BBK. But uh, a wine Stealth, dual plane high rise intake, a Demon 600 carb. Uh, vacuum secondaries, nothing really fancy besides that. Uh, pretty stock. I'll hook the battery up. Let's see if it'll start. So it's been parked for a little bit. I'll just say that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, plus the weather's been kind of crappy out here lately. It's been hailing and all kinds of crazy stuff. But this battery's got a good charge. And I've got no... Yeah, battery's good and dead, I guess. Yep, yeah, have to jump start it. All right, let me go ahead and get all my stuff together for that. I'm gonna come back and hopefully she'll start it. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, just hooked up the cables. I got 20 foot booster cables. Highly recommend those. Uh, not for yourself or somebody. To, pretty much if it's in a parking lot and there's a car between you can actually jump it over without having to move it or roll it back so it's pretty cool let's give it a shot man i hope this time it starts hope there's nothing else wrong don't sound good All right, let's try that again. I don't know what happened, but it seemed like the uh, starter solenoid was stuck. It just kept cranking. There it is. 
Oh boy, I don't let it sit so long before I try to start it again. I said not very fast. It's got 373, uh, 373 gears in the back. Uh, T5Z, uh, basically a heavy, heavier duty T5. Uh, it's got a uh, center force dual friction clutch and pressure plate. So not, not much more, but you know, it's pretty much anything that has been added on has been added on. Uh, underdrive pulleys. Uh, better plug wires. It's got a X pipe uh, with uh, two chamber flow masters, dual exhaust. Like I said the rear end has got disc brakes on it. I need to change my uh, timing cover uh, gasket or water pump timing cover gasket because uh, it's got a leak. I can see there's a uh, coolant pulled up. That or it's corrosion on the timing cover, but I've got another. Upgraded the uh, master cylinder. To one from a from a T-bird, I believe, with you know disc brakes in the back, so it's a bigger, more master cylinder. It's a brand new Ford Motorcraft NOS. solenoid but it's, it's not I don't know it gets stuck every now and again I don't know why it was doing that with the old one too so I, I don't know if there's an issue maybe the battery was too far uh, too low and it just put too much strain on it got hot got stuck I know uh, the cables got hot especially the ground I believe was pretty warm but I also put a new ignition switch not the actual key switch, but the ignition switch on the column is brand new, also Ford Motorcraft, uh, NOS. So, got a little stubby antenna. Put a new uh, antenna in it because the old one broke. The original was black also, but it was like three feet or four feet tall it looked kind of dopey so changed it out got another one of these brand new nos got the original air air cleaner cover it's a dual snorkel setup where these go it's nos brand new in the box uh got a bunch of parts man i've got a storage full garage full of stuff with this car All right, next time you see it, it'll probably be on the road. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. This is stock engine. It's nothing fancy. Like I said, I haven't had this engine on here very long. A friend of mine had it in his 85 Mustang, which is original to that engine, uh, to that car. Other than that, it's pretty pretty stock. I mean, it's got some blow by if you hit on it if you hit it uh, real hard. Uh, stomp on the gas pedal, it'll it'll blow out a little bit of oil from the dipstick. It's, I guess putting on new heads on an old engine, uh, you know, it's not the best combination. But you know, eventually I'm gonna have that rebuilt or use one of my many engines I have in the garage or storage. Uh, I actually have a 331 uh, stroker kit I want to slap together uh, for this Mustang or also have a 1978 uh, Fairmont station wagon that I think would be awesome in uh, that 331 would be awesome in but you know just rack and stack projects 
That's all I can do for right now. But I want to keep this one running. Uh, my, wife, my wife and I like to go drive in this and, you know, just go cruise, especially on a beautiful day like this. A uh, nice evening, just go to the park or just take some scenic routes with the T-tops off. It's pretty awesome. All right, that's all I got right now.